everybody, and Merry Christmas. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Delicio. Welcome back to our series of games to buy for people for Christmas, or if this is maybe you've been given this list by one of your friends. Uh, we're doing different categories, and today's list of 12 games is advanced strategy. These are the complicated games, the games if you are, quote unquote, a gamer, and you're looking for the game, these are what we recommend, the games that you can spend hours and weeks probably on each one of these, playing them for quite a long time. Right, right. They're definitely not necessarily for the faint of heart, um, and all of them are, well, fairly involved, but I think they're all very, very fun, except for the ones he picked. Um, <laughs> wait, I didn't even look what he picked. Never mind. Know. His stuff's fine. They're mm -hmm. all good picks. It's been a good uh, year, and, you know, the, these don't necessarily come only from 2020, but it's been sure. a good year and a good last couple of years for a nice variety of involved, deep, deep, deeply strategic mm -hmm. board games. So mm -hmm. there's something here for you. Yeah, for sure. It, I was just going to say, they may have a little bit higher barrier to entry, but I look at this list and I feel like the payoff is worth that. Mm. All righty. Well, we tried to pick games that were also available online somewhere for you to pick up or at your local game store. So let's get started with Roy. So let's kick off advanced strategy with a big one, and that is Tekino Obelisk of the Sun. This is a game where you have all these different dice that you're going to be drafting to give you different actions, and depending on where the dice end up around this obelisk depends on the sort of actions you can take with those dice. You're also going to be building temples to try to get points for there. You're going to be building different things and trying to collect stone and different things like that. Lots of resource management, lots of like dice worker management, and you're trying to figure all that stuff out, and there's tons of technologies you can use to upgrade as well. This is great great for those who like those crunchy Euro style games that are very much about the action economy and resource economy and you're trying to just figure out how to squeak out those last few points to overcome your opponent. Lots of advanced strategy here, lots of different things you can learn and dig into in this game and that is Tekinu. My first pick here is Beyond the Sun. You know I love tech trees and I know plenty of people who like them even more than I do. Well if you do this is the game for you my friend because this is basically a large tech tree that's what the board is, in which you are going to be colonizing planets, going out into outer space, developing new technology, right? Dealing with the other players at the table. All of that in a sideboard with some planets and then this giant tech tree. And it is so engaging. It is so uh, compulsory. It really gets its hooks into you. You know, you I had this sort of forward propulsion as I was playing this game that was uh, unreal. It's just a fantastic game. I think you're really going to like it. Check it out. Um, the board, I wish it was a little more attractive, to be honest, but the game is just compelling. Beyond the sun. Okay, well, Z took us up to space. It's time to go underground now. This is In the Hall of the Mountain King. In the Hall of the Mountain King is my first choice for advanced strategy, and it has, to me, one of the most unique and satisfying resource triggering type of mechanics I've ever seen. You have a number of cards in front of you that are called your troll smoot. You're playing a troll, a clan of trolls, and you're trying to build as deep as you can into the mountain to get the most valuable areas. And so the board represents this mountain from the outer edges to the inner edges. And so you do this by playing polyomino shaped pieces and you have to gain resources to do your digging. And the way you do this is you have this troll smoot in front of you, which is your kind of clan of trolls, and it's built in a pyramid style. And so the way it works is that when you trigger a particular troll to gain its resources, it's not only going to get their resources, it's going to get the resources of all the trolls that are underneath them in a pyramid style. And you have to be really careful about how you trigger them. There's a lot of timing involved. A really, really unique and satisfying mechanic. That is in the hall of the Mountain King. So we go from in the ruins of an underground kingdom here to now to the ruins in the jungle. And so my first game here is the Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now the Lost Ruins of Arnak combines several mechanisms. There's the deck building mechanism, which was introduced in Dominion, where you're building your own deck. But there's also worker placement, as you send your workers out to different spots in the jungle to both dig at different sites out there and to discover new ones. But as you discover these new ones, 
there's these big giant guardians, maybe spiders and snakes, which is, um, and you have to confront your fears so that you can score points in this way. And you're moving up a track. This is what we call as kind of sort of a point salad game where there's just points to get everywhere in this game. But it all comes together in a really tight, really fun way because you're using these cards to get resources, you're using your workers to get resources, and you want to have as many actions on a turn as you can. And so actions can be buying new awesome cards that will help you out in your deck, or your actions can be going out and discovering and fighting off as many of these guardians as you can, or just moving up a technological track and scoring points that way. There's multiple ways to victory, but the game is also never gonna play out the same way. The different sites you find will be different in every game. There's two different sides to the board. Uh, the technological track might be one thing, and the cards that come out will be different from game to game. Really beautiful art. The theme there is kind of in the background, but it, it comes out just because of the art and the components. But this offers a really in-depth experience that a lot of people are going to like. This is certainly one of the hottest games in the second half of 2020, and there's a reason for it. It's really that good. My next one here is an older game, but it's one that I have played several times this year, and I feel it could be great for an advanced strategy list, and that is War of the Rings 2nd Edition. This game has all sorts of different strategy as you're min-maxing your actions, trying to figure out exactly where you want to go on the board. It's very asymmetrical as one side's the Fellowship, the other side's playing the Shadow, and there's different strategies completely for each side. The Fellowship's just trying to hang on and get that ring into Mount Doom, but maybe they can try to figure out how to muster forces in different areas. Lots of interesting decisions there. There. And then as the shadow player, you have to figure out which strongholds you're going to attack. The shadow player is trying to take over strongholds. The free people are trying to get that ring to Mount Doom. And it's all about holding on and playing strategically with all of these different action cards you have as well and figuring out the best time to use all of them and where to strike your opponents. This is a big, grandiose, epic strategy game, and that is War of the Ring. Endeavor was a game that came out, oh, I don't know, several years ago, and it was reprinted recently as Endeavor Age of Sail. They got reworked a bit, it uh, got cleaned up a bit, but that first design was so strong that this had nowhere to go but up. It's a very quick playing game in which you are deploying your ships, uh, going to different continents, opening up those continents, gathering cards that give you new abilities, and managing some tech lines that you have in front of you, growing your ability to build better buildings or hire more workers, or what have you. If you love that idea of pushing up tracks, if you love quick turns, they don't get quicker than this, you are going to enjoy this game. Quite a large package, so if you're giving it as a gift, make sure you like that person a whole lot, but hey, Endeavor H of Sale is fantastic. All right, my second advanced strategy game is a highly asymmetrical game of woodland warfare and intrigue. That is Root. In Root, you are taking on one of these forest factions, and each faction plays very, very differently, and it is such an intriguing game. Just when you feel like you've gotten a handle on how a particular faction plays, you try another faction, and you're almost starting from zero again. It really allows for some very, very interactive and just compelling gameplay. If you're playing as the birds, it's a bit of a programming mechanic, and that feels very different than if you're playing as the Woodland Alliance, and you start basically off the board, and you have to build up your, your power until you can kind of come up in a very strong, uh, you know, uh, big turn towards the end of the game. And so, Root is a game that looks gorgeous. It's a little tough to teach, a little tough to learn, but the payoff is so worth it. That's Root. Well, it's hard to argue with Mike on Root. Uh, so we're going to jump now to a very different game called Whistle Mountain. Now, Whistle Mountain is a game. It's another worker placement game. You'll notice that I tend to like those. But here, you essentially make the places you're going to. In this, you have three different size airships. And you are placing them at various spots on the board. But you're building a middle section, a big dam to keep the water from coming in and scaffolding and putting pieces on it almost like Tetris. But as you put these pieces out, as you place your airships on there, every spot they're next to or on is going to give them whatever that is. So you'll get resources or take special abilities. And so you're kind of building this to make these custom spots where you can put your airship and do all kinds of cool things. 
Of course, other people can go there too. This game is so entertaining as you play through it. There's just so much going on. You have so many options. You can build the dam up and get points that way, or try, like I said, to build these really cool places. Each player has a special ability and can gain more of them over the course of the game, so you need to utilize those as much as you can. It's a fairly abstract game. There's, I don't know that I necessarily know, feel like I'm building a dam, but these air ships, the fact that they're three different sizes and the big one is harder to put on the board, but when you put it in the right spot, gives you way more resources, is a lot of fun, and it's neat to build special abilities that no one else has and utilize those to the best that you can. Great game, love it a lot. That's Whistle Mountain. My last one here is a very thematic strategy game. It's also cooperative, and that is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This game seems like a great Christmas present for somebody that really wants to have a crunchier game with lots of interesting action cards to play as you're using your deck to move around the board, facing all sorts of different opponents. And Jaws of the Lion makes Gloomhaven even easier to get into. It's the same like system and stuff, but it has this board that basically has all the maps for you. So you're not having to dig for all of these different dungeon tiles. You're able to throw the map out there and strategically work together to overcome each of these dungeons. So Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is a great Christmas gift. All right, I was talking about large games uh, with uh, my Endeavor Age of Sail, and Rose was talking about Gloomhaven, though he, he talked about the smaller one. Well, Black Angel, which is my next pick, is also quite a large game. Again, we are in space here, much like Beyond the Sun, and you are going to be uh, rolling dice and then using those like workers to take actions. You're going to be activating the Black Angel, parts of the Black Angel itself, which is the spaceship, or you are going to be deploying uh, ships outside into space and flying around, going to different planets. Lots going on in this game. Very thinky, very involved, but an extremely good rule book, a really distinct look, very captivating look, and just fantastic strategy throughout. This packs a punch. There's a lot in there, and I really enjoy it. So check it out, Black Angel. Okay, my final game on the advanced strategy list is part of what's known as the West Kingdom Trilogy. This is Paladins of the West Kingdom. And in Paladins of the West Kingdom, you're going to be placing out workers of different colors, which represent different types of workers that are going to allow you to gain points in a multitude of ways. You also have to account for different tracks that are going to influence each other. And so this is one of those games where there are so many things that you want to do on your turn, but you just can't quite do it. You're one resource short, you're one worker short, but it also allows you to feel so clever when you can pull off this great epic turn. It's a game that has a great pacing where there's it starts off slow but as the game goes on more and more you feel like you're really accomplishing some big big things on your turn and so that's something i really like in advanced strategy games is this feeling of progression where you start off slow but by the end of the game you feel like you have really built up this powerful engine and paladins of the west kingdom does a great great job of that I don't know, it's hard to top Paladins, but I will here with one of the best games of the year, and that's Dune Imperium. Dune is a universe that a lot of people love. The science fiction version of this universe is just very intriguing. With a new movie coming out next year, people are very excited about it. There's very few board games that delve into this, and this is a brand new one. And this one also uses deck building and worker placement, but does so in a really cool combo. From the folks who brought us Clank, one of my favorite games, in this game, you are playing cards to put workers out, but that card enhances what the worker might do. But also, if I don't use that card to put that worker out, I can reveal that card at the end of my turn and get resources. And so every card has dual uses. The cards also determine where your worker can go. So you're buying new cards, thinking about all these options. And the game has some direct confrontation in it because each round you're sending some of your troops out to battle. And you can send out a pile of troops to hope to win, but at the end of that battle you're going to lose them and you'll need to prepare for the next battle. So you have to decide which battle you're 
you're going to go for. So these battles are for victory points, and you only need 10 victory points to win this game. So you're thinking about those battles. You're thinking about getting influence with the Fremen and the Emperor and the Trading Guild and uh, Benny Gesserit. There's all different things. The theme, I think, comes through really well, has really great art, but it's the game itself that has me going back again and again and again. And even though I love this game with three and four players, uh, Mike played this game solo with, there's an app that you can play or you can play with cards from the box, and he said it works really well that way too. So a one to four player game that works fantastic. If you love the Dune universe, you will really like this game. And even if you don't, the gameplay is that strong. One of the best games of the year, certainly one you should check out. That's Dune Imperium. Woo, if you tried to play all these in one day, you couldn't. <laughs> No, I don't think you could. No, no, no. That would be cool. Man, though, no. looking at these games, this is this is stuff, right? We talk about great, solid games. Mm -hmm. If I mean, any one of these, they're all very highly rated. They're all mm -hmm. a lot of fun to play. And they all provide, I think, fairly unique and different experiences. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, very, very different types of games. The one thing that they all have in common is that they're going to make you think. <laughs> they're going to make you put your brain to work. But really good games. Definitely a lot of stuff that borders on that epic and lets you sink your teeth in really deep and try to learn all those different strategies. Mm -hmm. And if you think they're too complex for you, we did a list of strategy games, which are slightly less complex. You can check that out or all, any one of our lists. We have lists going up all week in different categories for the 12 Games of Christmas series. But we're going to get going here. I hope you have fun Christmas shopping season. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun thinking. <laughs>